Today is a really rainy afternoon, and what better time to review the all-new BYD SEAL sedan. Come join me over here. The BYD SEAL is the latest in BYD's Ocean Team series of electric vehicles. And this vehicle was launched in Singapore about two months ago. The BYD Singapore team was really kind to invite me to the BYD SEAL launch event, and you can find the event coverage in the link above. Today, I'm going to give you an exterior and interior tour of the BYD SEAL, share with you the driving experience, the charging experience, and share with you a final verdict on who should get this car. Click subscribe to stay updated to more videos on EVs. For many buyers of the BYD SEAL, they often would also want to contrast with the Tesla Model 3. Over here, you see the original design of the Model 3. Tesla just refreshed the design. Dimension-wise, they're quite similar, as you can see over here. And both are good EV sedans, both are good options. Now, for the Tesla Model 3 in Singapore, the rear-wheel drive version starts at around $204,000 at current Category B COE prices. And for the BYD SEAL, you can get the rear-wheel drive standard range version starting from $190,000. So, slightly cheaper. There are three versions of the BYD SEAL. We've got the standard range version which comes with 460 kilometers WLTP range. And we've got the extended range version with range that goes all the way up to 570 kilometers. That's a lot. And in front here, you can see a very aggressive, very sharp X-shaped design with the BYD logo. A lot of people love the design of the BYD SEAL. It's a very nice looking car. Now let's head to the sides. The version that BYD Singapore has allowed me to test drive is the all-wheel drive performance version. So it comes with larger 19-inch rims. And you can see the rim design over here by my side. Over here, you see the sharp angles. The door handles are flushed when it's locked. You can unlock and control the car with the BYD app. You'll find a link above for an overview of the BYD app. Or you can also use the car keys. And when we unlock the car, the door handles come up above the car is a panoramic glass roof. So we'll spend more time taking a look at it when we review the interior. As you follow me down, you will see the BYD SEAL's charge port on the rear right. Now for many people will be wondering, can I charge my cars outdoor in the rain like this? Yes, you can. We're actually next to a CDG NG AC charger. So these are type 2 chargers. They are water resistant. So the risk of getting electrocuted would be a lot less and some of our friends have brought their EVs to a car wash, sprayed water inside, and it's been fine so far. So over here in the charge port, where you open the first flap, you get the AC charger. This is a slow charger. It goes up to 7.2 kilowatts max charging speed. If you want faster charging, over here you open the second flap, you get the CCS2 charger. It goes up to 150 kilowatts. It's pretty fast and really good for long road trips, especially if you're driving out of Singapore. We cover these two flaps. A feedback I have for many manufacturers is, do we really need these two flaps? Because brands like Tesla do not use them. And actually a lot for like Tesla, the charge port actually opens above, which provides natural cover from the rain. That's one idea for car manufacturers in the future. As we come to the back, you see this 3.8S here, because this is the fastest variant of the BYD SEAL. It goes from 0 to 100 kilometers per hour in 3.8 seconds really fast. And to open the trunk, we press this small button. It reveals a 402 liter trunk. Pretty decent size. Below, we get some hidden storage. Usually, we keep our battery repair kit over here. When we want to close the trunk, we just press this button over here. EVs have no engines, which means we also have storage space in front. Let me show you how to open the trunk, which has an extra 53 liters of storage. From the driver's side, there is a latch below. So you have to pull the latch two times, twice for safety. And we go in front. And up here, you can see instead of an engine, there is storage space. And I've got my backpack over here. Enough room for a backpack, enough room for groceries, stuff out food. I hope in the future that we won't need another cover like this. So just one cover. The best part is no part. And you just push down a little bit. And that's it. Very handsome looking car. Now let's check out the interior. We'll see you inside. Welcome to the interior 
off the BYD seal. So to turn on the car, you put your foot in the brake pedal and press the start stop button. And the car comes to life. I have a question for all of you. Do we need the start stop button? Let me know down in the comments below. I feel that it's okay to do without it because when you come in the car, we want the aircon, we want it to turn on. It's a legacy from older ICE cars especially. And I hope that future EVs do away with this button. Now that we're in the car, you can see we've got a 15.6 inch screen. All BYD EVs have this iconic rotating screen. Now, you've got two wireless phone chargers down here. So it fits even if the screen's vertical. But one thing we encountered is, if let's say you have guests who are not as familiar with the car and if there's something like a bottle down here, it would obstruct the turning, like as you see. So you just got to be a bit mindful. I think that's just one small design thing. But I wish there was a little bit of buffer room between this space and also the screen, so that even when it's vertical, there's a little bit more of room. Down here, talking about room, there's some extra storage below in this compartment where my hands are. And that's where two USB ports are. There's a USB-C and USB-A port below. The car has its own software and it supports wired Apple CarPlay. So you need a wire connecting to your phone, your iPhone, for Apple CarPlay. So the Apple CarPlay is over here. For Android Auto, the good thing in this car is that you can use it wireless. My ask is for all future EVs, whether it's BYD or other brands, allow Android Auto and Apple CarPlay to be wireless. I believe there's no good reason for it to be wired from now on. Now, the built-in software for BYD, as you can see, is fast, it's responsive. They have their own navigation. And from my experience using it, it's not yet as good as a Google Maps or Waze. However, if you need something that just gets you to point A to point B, this is one way of using it. Another thing that is helpful is when you want to play music, they have their own music player. And here, Media Center or Music. And you can choose your different source, like Bluetooth to your phones. And you can just play a, a song over there. This part here, you've got your park button. So your park's here. This is a gear shift, so it looks like a crystal. Just, you see a bit of blood here because of the umbrella just now. So I filmed for you all in the rain because the BYD seal is a truly special car. I saw a passerby who said that they like the design of the BYD seal more than the Tesla Model 3. So let me know what you think about the design. I think both appeal to different people. So here you've got your reverse neutral drive. You've got a few different functions like your default or your window. This lever here for mode, it changes our driving mode. You can see sport, everything turns, up. there's a bit of red outline, eco, and also normal. So there are three driving modes. Now, the one thing I noticed is that there's also a mode button here in the steering wheel. However, this mode in the steering wheel does not change the driving mode. It changes the mode here in the touchscreen. So I think my ask is when there is a word mode to just keep the language consistent. Apart from that, you've got media controls on the right side of the steering wheel. Over here, they have their intelligent cruise control button. I tried it. It works well on straight roads. It also manages to stop and adjust the speed based on the cars in front of us. And now you hear the icon, it's quite loud, right? So you can actually adjust the icon here in the screen, like so. They've got all different features. You can have driver's side, front passenger side, You've got heated seats also, and also ventilated seats, which is really cool and hot day. Purify the air, especially in hazy periods, and you can have different aircon settings. I think that BYD is doing a good job building up their software ecosystem, and I encourage them to continue working hard on this, hopefully providing more software update, and add some fun features, let people play games, watch videos. That'll be a nice ask. In front here, uh, there's quite a number of different buttons as you saw earlier. Center storage. And one unique thing that I've seen in this car but not other cars is on the driver's side over here, just below the steering wheel, there's this extra small pocket. So this is a good spot to put our keys, maybe a small wallet or some credit cards. Most people will not open this small compartment. Pretty cool. Now above us, this is the uh, paranormal glass roof. 
And one advantage it has over a Tesla Model 3 is that the Tesla Model 3 has a beam in the middle, a pillar in the middle. While for this one, it's fully unobstructed. It's like the Tesla Model Y's glass roof. Very nice, especially for real passengers as we'll see later on. The seats are comfortable. Another thing you'll notice is that everything is black in this interior. So if you like black, you should be happy with it. It is quite premium, it's quite simple, it's relatively elegant. I think BYD has built a great car. I have a few friends who are Tesla owners sit in this car and they like the interior too. Now, let's check out the back seats. See you behind. Welcome to the back seat of the BYD Seal. One small touch that BYD has done really well is at night, all these lights have a blue ring around them, so it's really easy to find them at night. And they're all touch control. So it works very well in the daytime, but especially at night, it's very user-friendly for kids, for elderly, who are trying to find the lights. Now, as you sit down in the seats proper, because it's an EV, there is no transmission tunnel, so there's nice foot space even for the center passenger. There's a little bit of two USB ports here, USB-A and USB-C below and it's covered over here. You've got a small storage compartment for your phones. You've got aircon vents over here. Here, there's some holes in the seats. There's some pockets. And down here, you have cup holders. Standard and comfortable. If you compare this with a BYD Atto 3 and Seal, you can clearly tell the difference. Now, the highlight here for real passengers as you sit down properly in the back seat is the paranormic glass roof. One thing you'll notice is that it's darker compared to the Tesla's glass roof, so it may bring in less sun, a bit less heat. Let me know for those of you who've tried the BYD seal, how is it like in our tropical weather? I think it's very spacious and comfortable for most people behind. It's good for road trips. It is still a sedan, so you can see like my legs, there's still a hole down here compared to sitting down in the SUV where you sit more upright, more straight. I think if you're doing a very long road trip, I would love to have an SUV, but for any short journeys, less than four hours, no problem at all. This is a very comfortable car. Now let's go back to the front seat. We're going to drive to a nearby EV charging station and showcase the driving experience. See you back in front. Before we go to a charger, we want to understand what our state of charge is. And you can see in the BYD app or in front over here, you can see that our state of charge is 74%, which gives us another 387 km. Really good. The range in this BYD seal is solid. BYD does have a built-in charger locator. What we found and noticed is that it doesn't show every single charger yet. So as BYD continues to improve this, another option is just to use the SP app. I use SP a lot for charging. So I go to EV charging and you show automatically shows you all the nearest chargers based on your current location. And I see over here, PLQ3, we've got two AC and two DC chargers. So let's head over there. So as we click on this, it opens up, it shows you what they have. I'm going to click on directions and I'm going to use Google Maps. Very short six minute drive. So as we take this drive, let's showcase a little bit of the car's driving experience. You adjust your seats and we're ready to go. Drive mode down here. And the car's in drive mode, a bit foggy, right? So we use the the mirrors. As we go forward, say goodbye to the Tesla Model 3, our good friend over there. Let's head out. This is a very historic and beautiful part of town. You can see very nicely maintained buildings on our left and our right. They're nice murals as well. So the east of Singapore is more quiet, more residential. I noticed that the, the fog does build up in a, in a rainy afternoon like this. Okay, we're making a left turn. So you can see that the turn signals are a bit louder. So this is a good opportunity as we are here in the intersection, just to show you okay, how we can try to turn on the heater and see if the fog clears up. Otherwise, I'll just use this. 
we are only a very short five minute drive. Now throughout the drive, there are blind spot indicators on the side mirrors. One thing this car does not have, it doesn't show you the, the camera view, like what you see in the Hyundai Ioniq 5 or even a Tesla. However, it does have a, a camera for your car. So you can click this, you can see a 360 degree view. It is distorted as you can see, so it's not the same. You can change the different viewing angles in the car over here, the back, the front. So that's one nice thing. So you want to see the rear view, you can see the bike behind you. And to just activate the cameras again, just press this button on your steering wheel. That's it. There is no single pedal driving in this car. That means it has creep. The, if I let go of my foot from the accelerator, the car will creep a bit forward as you can see right now. So I hope that more manufacturers give us the option of single pedal driving. Maybe not everyone will use it, but it's nice to have that option. I would definitely use it. For the driver, I've got a heads up display so I can see the speedometer in front. Only the driver can see it. So I'm seeing I'm at 33 km per hour right now. So that's a nice touch. I don't have to look at the screen or below to see my current speed. The ride is quiet and the suspension is pretty comfortable. I should be going forward actually. I'm giving you a Singapore tour today so that you get to experience a little bit more of the drive experience. So we're going to take another route, similar ETA, same speed. We're just going to go through Hague Road over here. So let me know if you have experienced a little bit of this fogging because I've already turned on the heaters but we still see a fair bit of window fog over here. Another thing about this car is that it does have auto wipers. So the wipers will just activate itself depending on the amount of rain. That's something that the Atto 3 and Seal do not have, I believe. So you wait for the car, let me show you the speedometer. You will be able to see only in the driver's side, like so. So from my view, you can see the zero. As it moves forward, you can see that zero moving to a one. So that's the driver's side speedometer. We are pretty close to the SP charger right ahead. And just for you to experience a little bit of the acceleration. You can see that the pickup is really fast on this car. Really, really fast. That's the power of dual motor performance for you. And to our left is the PLQ3 building. So we're going to go to the SP charger at level 2. It's my first time there, charging there. So every episode, we do our best to showcase to you how many chargers there are in Singapore. The most recent stats from the government shows that there's 4,900 EV chargers in Singapore. That means almost 5,000 charging points. That means you can't go more than 5 minutes anywhere in Singapore without finding an EV charger. Of course, as we drive up north to Malaysia, even Malaysia is building up a lot more chargers, not just Tesla superchargers, but local companies like Gentari, TNB are expanding the network significantly. The situation is even better in Thailand. We had a lot of Singaporean friends who drove up to Thailand recently and they had no problem charging. Here we go in a parking. EV chargers are at level 2. SP has 6 charging bays over here. 3 slow AC chargers and 3 fast DC chargers. I wish that Google Maps actually points us directly to the charges. The good thing with this one is that they're all here, they're all directly here. And we're going to use this bay over here. So how do you tell whether the fast or slow charges? You can see there, DC 50. Let me just bring the window down. And that is a 50 kilowatt fast charger. So let's use that. These cameras, because it was raining, so you can you do see a little bit of the condensation and raindrops over there. Otherwise, this is uh, just a good way to guide me in slowly. There are quite a fair bit of lines, and the distortion is something you've got to pay a little bit of attention to. Otherwise, a very helpful feature just to get us in smooth and nice. And that's it. So. Press P here to park, start, stop, and let's go out and charge this car. See you outside.
So when you come in and out, the, there's an easy entry and exit. The seats move out, making it easier for you to get out of the car. Pretty cool. Welcome to the SP charger. The first step we do is to open the charge port and open the flaps. Then we bring the charging gun. So we're using the CCS DC50. We lift it and put it here. That's step one. Step two, we're going to scan the QR code using the SP app. So the SP app, there's a scan button. It will tell me that the charging rate is 65 cents per kilowatt hour. I'm good and I click start charging. It's taking a while to load. It says here it takes up to 30 seconds to start charging. So you hear the fans starting up, that's a good sign. And some cars like you saw in the Hyundai Ioniq 5, it does have the charging indicator in the charge port. For this one, you're not able to see it directly in the charge port. Two things you can do. One, we wait for the app to say that charging has begun. Or two, you can look in the front of the car to see the charging status when it's ready later. It's still taking a while. Over here, it says it's charging already. So you can see it's showing the correct state of charge, 73%. And it'll take some time before the kilowatt numbers go up. Okay, it's going up here already, 47 kilowatts, which is close to the max capacity that this charger can do. When you follow me down here to the front, you can see in the car that the charging is in progress. So let me open the door. And in front here in the instrument panel, you will see the charging speed. And time remaining is 37 minutes. So I can take a short break before coming back, like just getting a coffee break, especially after such a rainy afternoon like this. I am really going to get a coffee after this. Come join me here as we just do a recap of my final verdict of the BYD seal. You can hear the SP charger. You can see in Singapore right now, there's so many more EV options. Over there behind, you see the BYD Eto3, which we originally reviewed. That's one of the most popular EVs here in Singapore. Now that car is about $170,000 Sing dollars onwards. And what I love about the BYD seal is the design is great. That's one. Second, the range is solid. The, at the entry level version, you get 460 kilometers. The real world range, from what I found, is about 90% of WLTP range. So if it's 460 WLTP, it's just roughly about 420, 430 real world range. For the top spec extended range version of up to 570 km, that means you're getting close to 520 km in real world range, at least. If you think about a drive from Singapore to KL, that's 350 km. So you've got plenty of buffer, no problem, you can get there in one single way without charging. And the reality is most of us, most of us will stop at least once. If you've got kids, you want a snack break, you want a toilet break. So there's plenty of starting charging stops as we travel around and go road trips around Southeast Asia. So the range and the design are what this car has going for it. The price is decent too. Hopefully COE prices start trending down in 2024. If it does, it makes cars like this more accessible to more people. Now whether it's the BYD Eto3 like this or as you see increasingly in Singapore, a lot of Tesla Model 3s like the white one over there, every ICE car off the road is a win for an environment. The BYD seal has many good things going for it. What can be done different? I think that the overall software can have some refinement. So example, when you see the 360 degree cam, there is some distortion. So if BYD can just clean it up, for example, like what the Hyundai Ioniq 5 has, that would help this a lot. And maybe even show us the blind spot cameras in the car as well, because the car has cameras. Let us see what the cameras are seeing when we have our turn signal on. Pricing, BYD is making improvements here in Singapore. The BYD still used to be price parity with the Model 3. Now it's slightly cheaper. However, the price difference is small enough that many people are still going to fairly do a comparison and test drive a Tesla Model 3. So if they can continue and improve the value proposition, that would help. The software stack can be integrated better, get more updates, give us more options. And as we think about the future of EVs for BYD, start, stop button. Those are things that could probably be done and most people will not miss it. Overall, this is a solid car. By itself, this is a great EV, it is responsive. Some owners will still find that the Tesla Model 3 has a more responsive and more smooth and instant acceleration. But this car is very, very fast already. It's actually roomier 
than the Polestar 2 sedan as well, which some people compare and cost even more than this car. The BYD team has done an excellent job. I look forward to seeing more of their new cars come up in Singapore and around the world. And BYD is now the leading EV brand in many countries around the world, either neck to neck with Tesla or sometimes even ahead of Tesla, especially in Southeast Asia where we are. If you found this video useful, please click the like button. Hit subscribe to stay updated to more videos on EVs. Okay, today... Okay, okay. <laughs>